curious about vegetables? Talk to Iswa Seed. Hello everyone, welcome to Around the Veg Table, Season 3! Uh, I'm Lisette Lacambra and your host for this program. This season, we are highlighting topics related to sustainability and climate resilience in vegetable production. So to kick off the season, we invited Mr. Imad Mustafa, um, our technical manager in Iswa Seed Knowledge Transfer Bangladesh, to present the results of their research entitled Experimental Study on the Yield and Economics of Intercropping Pumpkin and Tomato Using the Sorjan Farming Method in Bangladesh. So in Season 2, um, Episode 3, Imad presented the Sorjan Farming uh, Method in Bangladesh and this is the follow-up episode focusing on how to improve the vegetable production using sorjan. So thank you, Imad, uh, for joining us again. How's everything in Bangladesh, Imad? <laughs> good. The weather is good. We have a new season arrived. Just uh, we call this uh, blooming of flowering season. It's called Boshanto. So we are good. Uh, thank you. Great. That's good news. So thank you. Uh, thank you again for um, yeah joining us in this episode. It's your second uh, yeah episode in the around the veg table, and I'm also looking forward to this presentation. Now I'm giving you the virtual floor. So you're also welcome to share your screen from your side. Thank you so much for giving me this floor. And uh, good morning to our friends joining from Africa. And a warm afternoon uh, greetings uh, to those uh, tuning in from Asia. It's a pleasure to have such uh, diverse audiences uh, gathered virtually today. Despite the physical distance between us, uh, we are connected by our shared interest in our topic uh, for today uh, to present the experimental study on the yield and economics of intercropping pumpkin and tomato using the surgeon farming method in Bangladesh. Uh, today, we will embark on a journey together to explore brief overview of the uh, of this topic. So whether you are uh, starting your day or winding down, let's engage in an enriching discussion that spans uh, continents and time zone. Thank you so much. Uh, and this is Imad Mustafa. Today I'm presenting something that will uh, enrich uh, interest in it. Uh, I'm uh, sharing the objectives of the uh, study uh, that was uh, done in uh, 2022, basically. So now our first objective was to explore the impact of uh, intercropping one and two tomato plants on the individual fruit yield of, to uh, individual fruit yield of pumpkin employing the surgeon farming method in the coastal region of Bangladesh. And the second was uh, to evaluate uh, the cost uh, benefit ratio and profitability associated with uh, intercropping pumpkin and tomato using the surgeon farming method. So uh, as you can see, uh, our project activities is uh, uh, going in the coastal belt of Bangladesh and uh, we have conducted the action research in the uh, chow fashion of uh, Fula district in Bangladesh. So I'm uh, just giving you a little, uh, little recap of the surgeon farming method that's stable uh, episodes. So now uh, the known and uh, famous uh, cultivation techniques uh, in the coastal belt of Bangladesh. Uh, this is the indigenous farming practices of uh, the local uh, farmers. Uh, those uh, cannot able to grow vegetables all year round. Only the uh, the surgeon farming method opens the window to cultivate the uh, cultivate the vegetables uh, year round. So as you can see, the surgeon farming method is the modification of a raised bed uh, where uh, uh, water uh, cannot uh, inundate uh, water cannot overflow your bed in the peak monsoon season. So it's 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 uh, it's uh, the uh, it's good to cultivate the vegetables in the low lying area. Uh, as you know, the coastal belt of Bangladesh is low lying, and uh, the in the peak monsoon season, the water is uh, like uh, in the low lying area. It's like one to two feet. So the basic idea is to raise the bed above the flood level in the peak monsoon season, and it also uh, at the same time it brings the uh, opportunities to fish farming for the farmers as well. So 
that is the that was the recap of our surgeon and if you want to see this is uh, that was available in the youtube as well so uh, the materials and methods was um, uh, in this in this uh, uh, experiment uh, i shared something that uh, it was conducted in the chart fashion uh, we employed a single factor experimental design to investigate the Im uh, impact of intercropping pumpkin with varying ratio of uh, tomato plants using the surgeon farming method the experimental treatments are like a um, monoculture of pumpkin uh, this is the first treatment and this treatment involved growing pumpkin alone in a plot covering of an area of 47 uh, square meter and uh, no tomato plants were intercropped in this treatment and our second um, uh, second uh, treatment was uh, like um, a pumpkin intercropped uh, with tomato in alternative rows of uh, ratio one to one uh, in this treatment pumpkin was intercropped with tomato plants uh, in alternative rows uh, with a ratio of one pumpkin plant to one tomato plant each plot covered the uh, same 47 square meter with uh, 10 pumpkin plants uh, you can see there is uh, there was eight tomato plants as well uh, so our last treatment was a pumpkin intercropped with tomato in alternative rows of uh, ratio one to two uh, here, pumpkin was intercropped with uh, two tomato plants in alternate rows uh, with a ratio of one pumpkin plant to two tomato plants. Similar to the uh, previous statement, each plot covered an area of 47 same square meter uh, with 10, uh, in here 10 pumpkin plants uh, combined with 16 tomato plants. So our activities um, uh, uh, started in that uh, September 29th. We started uh, seed sowing. And pumpkin seed was sowing uh, like 10 days after a uh, tomato seed sowing to meet uh, the uh, transplanting date similar at the same page. So our uh, tomato and pumpkin transplanted on October 26th uh, and uh, the other uh, information we will share later, discuss later. So this is the uh, layout of the uh, action research uh, farm. As you can see in the treatment one, uh, pumpkin was uh, showing in the orange circle and uh, tomato was uh, showing in the triangle, red triangle. So in treatment one, there are no tomato plants, only pumpkin plants are here. And if you see uh, treatment two in here, as well as here, like in between two pumpkin plants, there is one tomato plants. And in treatment three, uh, in between two tomato plant, uh, two pumpkin plants, there are two tomato plants as well. This is the distance between plant to plant. Like uh, pumpkin were planted uh, two meters from plant to plant distance, and uh, in treatment two, one tomato plant was uh, planted uh, in between two pumpkin plants, and the uh, plant to plant distance was uh, one meter. And uh, for treatment three, we introduced two tomato plants with a plant to plant distance of uh, 0 0.6 meter. As you can see, uh, this is the pumpkin plants and in between two pumpkin, there were tomatoes. And I think it is uh, treatment two, there are, treatment three, there, are, there were two tomato plants in here. So uh, the ill performances of different treatments, we converted the result into 500 square meter for uh, Treatment one, we had a yield of uh, pumpkin like 998.8 kg uh, per 500 square meter. And in treatment two, where pumpkin and tomato were planted as a one is to one ratio, we have a pumpkin yield of 847.7 kilogram. And for tomato, we achieved 216.8 uh, uh, kilogram. And for treatment three, uh, where pumpkin and tomato was planted as a one is to two ratio, we got uh, uh, 803.7 kilos of uh, pumpkin and 305 kilos of uh, tomato. So this is interesting that uh, the combined yield of uh, the three treatment from the treatment one, we got 998. From treatment two, the combined yield of tomato and pumpkin uh, is the uh, uh, 1064 kilos and uh, for treatment three the combined yield of tomato and pumpkin was like uh, 11,008 
0.7 kilos. So this is a very interesting uh, that we when we analyze the cost of production per treatment uh, for 500 uh, square meter, and it is in USD. So so in 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 uh, in this table for treatment one, you can see the total cost of production for treatment one is a uh, 114.37 USD. This is also for 500 square meter. And for treatment two, you can see the cost has been a little higher for uh, like a 120. It's uh, just higher from uh, $6 from treatment one. And uh, for treatment three, it was like uh, 125. This is varies because uh, for seedling production cost and seed cost and also the irrigation cost was uh, different, was added for treatment two and for treatment three as well. Other costs are similar for each and every activities. Like here, Telis net was same. Uh, it's like 1.5 USD uh, for every treatments. And bamboo pole was same, uh, around 10 USD. And fertilizer was like uh, 45 USD. Pesticide was also given uh, throughout the field at the same rate and same cost, like uh, 21 USD. And mulching was uh, like 3 USD. And Sticky tape and film trap was also uh, installed in the field uh, as a cost of 12.76 uh, USD. So going to the next slide is uh, the economic analysis. So here we uh, have the cost of production, average selling price and gross return, total gross return and net return and return of investment. For treatment one, uh, the cost of production was like uh, you know, 114 USD. And uh, for it was already discussed a while ago, but um, uh, the average selling price was uh, was same, like uh, twenty cent for pumpkin and twenty one uh, cent for tomatoes. Uh, so uh, gross return, total gross return was like uh, two hundred three, two hundred nineteen, and uh, two hundred twenty seven. So uh, not uh, not a significant differences among those uh, treatment. And uh, the net returns, as you can see, 89, 99, and uh, 101. So uh, return of investment was like uh, 77, uh, 82, and 80 percent. So as you can see uh, here, ROI was the highest in the 80, uh, highest in the treatment two. Net returns was highest in the treatment three. Uh, this is good to have uh, intercropping with the uh, pumpkin and tomato. There are some pictures of the field of fire we conducted our action research. So as you can see, the uh, pumpkin was hanging over uh, under the trellis of the uh, two surgeon beds. And uh, also the tomatoes are there. And uh, this is the field of the pumpkin. The variety of the, uh, the variety name was Dorodi for pumpkin. And uh, Shuki for tomato. So there's the tomatoes, Shuki. And uh, we observe some disease uh, in here. The uh, field was uh, infested by the virus uh, due to sucking fest. And, uh, and uh, this is very much difficult to control till the season. And also we observe some, observe some fruit flies has been attacked uh, the fruits as well. So we can conclude and uh, recommendation some beautiful quotes and comments uh, during the research paper writing. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Palm, this said for being uh, great addition comments on this thing. So uh, for conclusion, our study in Chalfashion Bangladesh uh, sheds light in the dynamics of intercropping tomatoes and pumpkin using the surgeon farming method. We found that while intercropping tomatoes did not uh, affect pumpkin yield. Uh, the number of tomatoes uh, plants, the number of tomato plants in the uh, intercrop significantly impact uh, the tomato yield. Only for tomato plant increases, the yield was increased. Uh, this emphasizes the importance of optimizing the densities uh, for maximizing overall uh, yield in intercropping system. And furthermore, our research uh, underscored the benefits of growing two crops in the same field. 
resulting in higher yields and economic returns. Therefore, we recommend integrating tomatoes and pumpkins uh, for farmers aiming to enhance both yield and profitability. In uh, making informed decisions, uh, it's crucial to consider uh, crop prices and uh, seasonal variations, undertaking uh, market dynamics and strategic planning for essential uh, for maximizing returns. Looking ahead, we proposed a follow-up action research in our learning farm, focusing on fertilizer optimization and uh, recording the incidence of severity of diseases and insect pests. By addressing these aspects, uh, we aim to further refine uh, intercropping practices and contribute to the advancement of sustainable agriculture in the coastal belt of Bangladesh. And uh, this is a very common practice, as you can see, uh, the farmers of uh, the area, coastal belt, these photos was taken from uh, Churfeshan. Farmers was uh, uh, going for intercropping with uh, chilies and at the same time they are going for cucumber in here. Also pumpkin and tomato is quite common in there. Also, you can see the tomato plants were intercropped with for being with us for the last couple of minutes. And uh, thank you so much for joining today. Uh, the floor is open for comments, questions. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Imad, for presenting the results of your action research in Bangladesh. Um, how do you feel about the results? Yes, uh, the result is good, uh, but uh, it uh, didn't expect our expectation level because the uh, disease severity that this is incidence in the early stage and mid stage of the vegetables uh, okay. we we lost some uh, harvest but uh, the action research conducted for the objectives those objectives we met and we are happy to uh, meeting those objectives in the during the conduction of the research yeah and i think it's still a good uh, experiment um based on the the results where uh you may find that, that there are no significant um difference in the in the treatments but i think yeah there is some yeah small impact uh, compared to a monocrop um pumpkin uh, treatment so it's still a good job, Imad. Thank you very much. And I would like also to thank um, Palm for the support in this uh, implementation um, from the action research protocol writing, as well as to our Wageningen University uh, partners for also reviewing the, the protocol. So thank you, everyone. Um, and also the team in, 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 in Bangladesh, uh, also uh, Atik Vai, if it's Atik Vai is here. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. So now we are ready to answer some questions, Imad. Are you ready? Yeah. So first question um, from, I don't know who, but from Infinix Zero <laughs> X Pro. <laughs> uh, fertilization across all treatments carries the same cost. How was the fertilizers applied in T2 and T3, considering that two um meter planting space of pumpkin as a good question i think you might you can answer it <laughs> thank you very much for the first question and uh yes uh, there's a lots of uh planning that how we will apply the fertilizer when we're writing the protocols there are several options uh also at the same time we surveyed in the field that how the farmers uh, do the fertilization in the uh, intercropping segment. So we uh, actually followed the recommendation of the farmers, uh, their perception. Uh, we just uh, averaged uh, the data from uh, from where we collected the field from the field. Actually, uh, it it for it, it, it uh, the fertilizer was given for a couple of times. The first one during the land preparation, the basaldos were applied in the bed, and uh, they just. Uh, uh, mix the fertilizer by their spade a little and uh, for the for the uh, uh, split application they just uh, giving in the uh, in between the space of two rows of uh, uh, plant in the surgeon bed so that's how we gave the fertilizer uh, thank you 
Yeah, and then I think it might, if I may, um, you decided to, from when we reviewed it, you decided to have the, a similar treatment of fertilization per area, but not on the, the, the crop itself or the population of the crops there. Because also the farmer's um, practice is they just, uh, regardless if it's a monocrop or it's um, an intercrop with tomato, they will put as the same amount of fertilizers on a trench in the surgeon technique. I think that was also uh, one of the discussion that we had before. Uh, that's why um, in Phoenix, uh, we considered that as um, uh, a similar or the same treatment in all fertilization per square meter in all the treatments. And um, yeah, I, and in one of your conclusion or your recommendation, Imad, is to to also check the fertilizer, to, uh, how to optimize the fertilizer later on with those intercrop um, tomatoes. So that will be a follow-up um, experiment <laughs> to check also like if you increase or adjust the fertilization in those treatments, what would be the, the result, yeah? But thank you, Phoenix, for the, the question. Um, Sylvie, what are the current practices of farmers in multi-cropping on dikes, pumpkin tomatoes, or do they have also other crops? What was the analysis from the farmers for this action research um, or the actions that they may take from these um, results? Yes, uh, very good question, uh, Sylvie. So when we uh, plan to uh, have this action research, we go for the farmer. And, and uh, this, is the, this is in the middle of, uh, uh, I think, uh, September, October time. Uh, so farmers mainly start the uh, intercropping during the March and April. They already uh, told of when we talked with the uh, neighboring farmers, they are mentioning that it is good to start uh, this uh, uh, intercropping during March uh, or April after April when they newly uh, rebuild the sorghum structure. So it's a continuous process. And you know, uh, in the sorghum, um, Till February, March, uh, the land is not been uh, remain fallow. So intercropping followed by relay cropping with the uh, cucumber, cucumbers family, with the uh, leguminous family, bottle go, uh, uh, the YLB, and also the Solanaceae family is very common in those area. Like uh, tomato and chilies are mostly popular in uh, cultivating with the main crops like pumpkin. That can be pumpkin, bitter gourd or maybe a cucumber. There's one question from Linu. I think you can reshare the, the screen where you have this uh, data on the yield difference you observed in monocropping and intercropping with tomato. So this is the yield performance of uh, monocrop, that is P, and the yield percentage, uh, yield, yield performance of uh, monocrop was like 998.8. Uh, this is from pumpkin and from the treatment tool where pumpkin and tomato was planted one to one ratio, you see a little less uh, amount of pumpkin was found, but it is not significant differences through the statistical analysis. And for treatment three, it was similar like 803. It was not also the uh, not significant, significant differences. Uh, while uh, the tomato plants uh, in the treatment was uh, treatment one where pumpkin was uh, cultivated solely, there was no tomatoes. Simple. Uh, but the treatment two where one is to one ratio of uh, tomato yielded like 216 kilos of uh, tomato where two tomatoes in between uh, two pumpkin, that is for treatment three, as you can see there some significant difference like 216 comparing 305 kilos of uh, tomato in here. I don't have any question in the chat box, so but if you are uh, if you wanted to turn on your mic to ask question to Ima, please you're welcome to turn on and mute yourself. <laughs> yeah, I have one question like uh, I, I noticed that you transplant the tomato at the first and after 20 days, you uh, transplant uh, tomato. Uh, due to my experience, tomato, uh, it 
very sensitive to the Wi-Fi, and I think uh, uh, pumpkin also uh, have the problem with Wi-Fi, but uh, it's more tolerant than the tomato. Do you face that problem at the field during the tomato? It uh, nearly nearly maturity and also pumpkin, because pumpkin you you transplant it at, at the first, yeah. Very good point, Samnang, and thank you for sharing that. I think I will uh, ask you might to clarify on the transplanting first and uh, later on the diseases and insect pests. Thank you. This is a very good comments and uh, question as well. So uh, when we planning uh, to write the protocol and uh, when to do something like uh, tomato and uh, tomato needs long time comparing pumpkin to transplant. So we are planning to uh, transplant at the same time as uh, the fertilization is uh, directly uh, connected the day after transplanting. So if we uh, if we transplant those at the same time, we can uh, fertilize uh, more or less in a similar time uh, because it's uh, we are going for the farmer practices of the fertilization thing. So connecting with the dots of fertilization, uh, the split application. So we uh, transplant those uh, same time and back calculating the transplanting date. So if we have to transplant at the same time, when we will sow the seeds. Uh, so uh, tomato seeds were sown 10, 11 days earlier than pumpkin. Yeah. And on the um, question uh, regarding the insect pest, Imad? Oh, the insect pest was uh, uh, after after 20 days of transplanting, we saw that uh, some white flies and it was uh, like, uh, we uh, keep the record and uh, like uh, pumpkin was uh, tolerant than uh, uh, tomato. Your, your question was like that. Uh, but uh, we saw uh, sucking pest of white fly was uh, mainly attacked uh, the pumpkin plants in here. Samnang, please, uh, you raised your hand. Uh, if you have any further comments, please. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank, uh, I, I, I have one more question. Like uh, you, you said you will be transplanted later in the same time, right? Yeah, transplanted at the, the same time, yes. yes. In the treatment, in the experiment, it was transplanted at the same time. But but based on my experience, the tomato in Cambodia, uh, the tomato, it takes more longer than uh, pumpkin. Like pumpkin, only around 65 days. But actually, tomato, it's around 89 days. So... It is possible to transplant the tomato at the first time before uh, pumpkin. Oh, yeah, I just want to uh, raise the problem what that i thinking to to think together. Yeah, because I also, I, I interest with, with this topic very much. But when we transplant the tomato at the first, we, we want the tomato uh, no, no, uh, the pumpkin at the first, we want pumpkin uh, make the sad to the tomato. But the problem, pumpkin, it's a very short time than tomato. It's a valid question. Actually, it's a very good point. Um, just for the sake of this first uh, trial or first study, then I think it might um, uh, made the decision to have it at the same time. But that can be a very good um, second, a follow-up uh, study on uh, looking at what, what will be the right stage of the, trans uh, the interval of transplanting um, the second crop in the intercropping uh, method. But yeah, a very good point there. And with the sake of the, um, the pests and diseases, that is also uh, one thing that was already mentioned by Imad uh, for the follow-up uh, studies to also um, create a, a data collection or monitoring um, by scoring also the insect pests and diseases um, 
uh, occurrence uh, in the in the whole setup in the different treatments. Yeah. But thank you very much, Samnang, for pointing that out. So maybe if you're if you're um, interested, and if it's really a needed um, objective for Cambodia. Uh, would be nice also to have a separate or um, a different uh, setup of experiments in Cambodia in your learning farm. I think um, in Indonesia also Septian is looking for a similar objective mm. of intercropping uh, different, uh, yeah, different mm. crops in uh, in same area. Yeah, thank you, Samnang. I had also a comment. I was trying to uh, follow follow up with the presentation. Like uh, he did mention that uh, when you when it was it was time for fertilization, it was done per per unit area, not per plant. Then also, when you look at the returns, he had the more returns on treatment two as compared to treat treatment one, and yet the cost of uh, uh, this okay, like the the money for for sale was also constant. And I wanted to try to understand how come that again he had more return on treatment two than treatment, and yet the the results in treatment three, the output was more than in treatment two. Very good eyes, Timothy. Back to you, Imad. Yes, sir. The treatment two, if I uh, go for the data, the treatment for treatment two, the total yield was like uh, one zero six four kilogram. So total yield, but for treatment three it was a uh, eleven hundred six kilograms. So basically, uh, the treatment three yielded uh, like uh, total uh, total yield was found uh, like eleven eleven hundred kilogram. Treatment two thousand sixty four kilogram, and monocrop was found like nine ninety eight less than thousand kilogram. So uh, the total yield is uh, highest found in uh, treatment three, but I'm quoting that uh, again, that uh, it is not found strictly significant. It is insignificant. That Ima, in can you share that uh, screen? Sorry. Can you reshare that screen? That's for, okay. yeah. Okay. So, as you can see, the total production in the treatment tree was uh, 11,000, 1100, sorry, <laughs> and uh, treatment two, 1,064 uh, kilogram. And uh, if you can see, when we segregated this uh, yield in pumpkin and tomato, you can find the Tomato yield found in the one to one ratio was uh, 216. But when we give uh, two plants of tomato in between pumpkin plants, then the yield was uh, higher, like 305 kilogram. So tomato, number of tomato plants is uh, directly increases the yield of Tomato. This is the uh, effect of increasing the yield due to increasing number of plants of tomato. But while the pumpkin plant is constant number, you, as you can see, a little uh, lower trend of the pumpkin yield found for treatment one to treatment two and followed by treatment three. So that may be the interest specific uh, competition in between uh, tomato and pumpkin. Uh, but uh, for total yield, it is good. But when we calculating the ROI, uh, the treatment two found was the best. Thank you, Ima. Timothy, is that clear from your side? Or you still have more question? I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, to maybe to to learn more, I I suggest you contact Imad. Imad can also discuss with you or uh, um, Palm to know more about the yeah the results. Yeah, from Facebook. I think this is not related to the to the um, topic, but there's one question: <laughs> How is the harvest when we use East West seed in fully organic cultivation? I think. Um, 
Currently, we, have, we don't have data on that. Maybe on the side of the home garden, we have, but we couldn't share it at the moment. Uh, we still uh, have an uh, integrated um, crop management, both uh, the use of organic uh, fertilizer and also um, inorganic fertilizers, and also the judicious use of steel pesticides is there. But if you wanted to learn um, and you're interested to really learn more, um, the cultivation or the yield status of tomato uh, grown in uh, purely organic cultivation, uh, please contact, not sure where you are or where you come from, Shamin Bandara. You can also contact our technical uh, specialists in the country. So we can also consider maybe to have that action research on tomato. Uh, cultivation. So, Shamin, if you are listening from uh, on Facebook live stream, please type where you come from, and um, yeah, we'll um, we'll uh, ask the technical specialist to be in contact with you uh, to discuss more about it. Thank you very much, Imad, for um, presenting this uh, result, and um, I'm looking forward actually for the next uh, yeah the follow up uh, results of your action research on sorgent technique. And um, uh, maybe looking as well on more of the objective on the fertilization uh, optimization uh, based on the different uh, number of intercrop uh, tomato. Um, also looking at the, um, the timing of the transplanting as Samnang also presented. So there's a lot of uh, yeah, potential follow-up on this study. So if you are also interested in the... Um, in the result, or you wanted to to do that also in your countries, please uh, contact uh, Palm and Imad, and let's discuss if we can also do uh, a more contextual action research regarding intercropping in your countries. So again, thank you very much, and that's the end of our episode. Do you have any uh, questions you would like to be answered in the future episode, or topics that you would like to learn more about? Leave your questions or comments in the section, uh, comment section or contact our technical support hub members in your country. Stay tuned for the next episode of Around the Veg Table. Curious about vegetables? Talk to East West Seed. Thank you everyone. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm.